Hey, what's up everybody? This is Joshua Casper. I'm back at you with another Ableton Live video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to use the vocoder to change the pitch and feel of a vocal clip. So what I'm going to do is show you how to turn this vocal. We can all live together in peace someday where there is hope, then there's a way. We can all live together in peace someday. Where there is hope. So we're gonna take that vocal and using the vocoder make it sound like this. So as you can tell, that's that pretty uh, default vocoder sound. And obviously you can get in and play with the vocoder settings and the MIDI and everything like that. I'm not gonna talk about that. What I'm gonna do is show you how to set up the routing inside of Live to get this effect started. And then obviously your creativity is gonna have to take you from there. Essentially what you're gonna need is a vocal. And on that vocal track, you're gonna to wanna to drop the vocoder. And I'm just using the Format 5 Plus. So if you come into Devices, uh, Audio Effects, go down to Vocoder and just choose the Format 5 Plus. And I just dropped it on there. And then after that, I have a little bit of reverb and limiter. And the reason why I did that is because it's mono and it sounds better mono. So let's, before I even show you the routing, let's go ahead and check this out on mono. And that's without any effects. And then stereo is like this. And then left, right. I just think that mono is a good place to start. And then when I want to widen it up, I'll use other effects because this gets kind of artifacty. And obviously, again, you can get in and dial in some stuff. But let's just let me show you how to do this. So what you're going to want is your acapella on, it could be anything, but generally an acapella on a track. You wanna drop the vocoder on it. I'm using, like I said, the preset format 5 plus. And then you're gonna to wanna to set up what's called a carrier. And the carrier is gonna be an instrument and you want the instrument to be sustained. So you want the, if it come into the envelope, you want it to be sustained, like sustained notes, because if it's a pluck, you're going to hear the pluck and it's going to affect the way the uh, audio travels through the vocoder. So I'll show you some examples of that in a second, but essentially you just want an instrument on there with a sustained note and you want to turn off the audio. So if I solo this. It's pretty pretty gnarly sound. It's not something I would ever want just by itself, but you know, once it's running through the vocal in the vocoder, it uh, adds a nice touch. But the sound of the instrument is going to change how the sound of the vocoder through the vocal sound. So keep that in mind. Everything is going to stay the same. We're just going to want to turn off that audio and you want to put some MIDI in there. Now, chords work really well for vocals, but as you can see, I have this solo note here and we can actually solo some of these as well. And if we go ahead and play that. So you can see it's actually uh, following the path of these notes here, and that's just so cool. So you can take, if you've got like a vocal you really want to use, it's in the key of F, and you really want to shape it or move it into a different key, this is a really good way to do it if you don't want to go in and try to pitch bend it and do it unnoticeably. So again, standard VST instrument here, it can be anything you want, but you want sustained notes with some MIDI, and then go back into the vocoder and check carrier, and that's why we named it carrier, just to make it easier. And you wanna go external, and then you wanna choose the channel. And it's much easier if we just choose the carrier that we renamed here, though if you didn't rename it carrier, it's gonna be whatever you want. And that's all there is to it. And then you can check, let's try, uh, for example, formant negative. So come in again, external, carrier. So 
So for this particular one, I definitely like that plus five. So again, come in external and it's really just gonna choose it as it was before, carrier every time, so that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, another thing that's just a quick aside, you want your MIDI to be connected. You don't want any gaps because if you put some gaps in there, let me put some gaps over here in the beginning so you can hear what the issue is. So if you're getting those kind of dropouts and glitchy sounds, that's because you have some gaps in your MIDI. You definitely want your MIDI to be flush so the transition between those notes is unnoticeable. But yeah, that's all I really wanted to show you. I hope that makes sense. I know it's kind of all over the place, but I'm really excited uh, to start using this inside of my own production. So I figured I'd share with you guys as I always do. Anyway, hit that subscribe button, give the video a like and a share, and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.